My name is Chris Principe. I'm the publisher of Financial IQ Magazine, and I'm so pleased to be at Cybos 2024 here in Beijing, China, the capital of China, and one of the big business and financial centers of the world. And it's the first time that Cybos has been here in China. So we're expecting great, great things from this event. There's many great banks, great providers here for Cybos, and I'm really privileged to be here with one. Rasheen, so nice to see you. So nice to see you. Thanks for coming to visit us. Great, thank you. Please, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the company. Sure. Um, so I'm Rasheen Levine. I'm head of UK and Europe for Wise Platform, and Wise Platform is essentially part of WISE, which is our correspondence services. So that's us offering all of the infrastructure, all the network, everything we've built, and the technology that underpins WISE's great product for end customers today. We actually allow banks and financial institutions to leverage that. So that's what WISE Platform does. Well, great. So it's, it's interesting for me because we're here at Cybos, and what many people might not know is that Cybos originally was a correspondent banking event. And we've seen over the last couple of decades that it's become very focused on payments. Yeah. And it, it, you appear with the WISE platform to really cover both of those. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, it's been an interesting journey for WISE. Obviously, we started off as a very much a kind of consumer brand. So people know the WISE app, they know the WISE website, they know that we transfer money. Um, but I think what we've realized is we've spent a decade building payment infrastructure, doing some of the really hard things about moving money internationally building infrastructure that allows people to do it really quickly and really low cost and with great operational efficiency. And so what we realized was actually there's huge value in that. And that's when we started to think about Wise Platform and we thought about how banks could actually use ours as a kind of B2B infrastructure player. Uh, and so here was our correspondent service offering, which is why we're at Cybos talking to current partners and hopefully future partners um, and getting the word out about the fact that we have a correspondent service solution now. That's interesting. So the transition from kind of consumer payments to being able to work with and, and help the banks, which I guess help the consumers. Exactly. It is, it's an interesting spot to, for, for you to play in and one that uh, has such potential because instant payments, as we hear so much about now, are so important because, you know, who doesn't want to get paid faster? Right? Exactly. And I think what we realize is that people love their bank and they're actually very happy and they trust that service, but not all banks are experts in international payments. So WISE has kind of been able to be an absolute expert in that niche. We've built a whole business around that. We have 6,000 employees who are thinking about international payments every day. How can we optimize those flows and make a better customer experience? And if they're able to leverage that expertise, that's kind of the best outcome for the customer at the end of the day. They can use the bank that they love and trust, and they've used for many years, but they also use that that kind of frictionless experience that WISE offers. So instant payments wherever possible. For us, that's 62% of payments on our network that move instantly today. And when we talk about instant, we mean under 20 seconds. So that's me kind of sending a payment and hitting the recipient's account in under 20 seconds, which for us is really important. That's, that's amazing because uh, in, in the banking field, you know, a lot of people will say instant payments are 24 hours. Yeah, it's a very different, there's some different perceptions out there. For us, we, we actually monitor it at that level because we believe that's the best possible experience a customer can have. When they have that instant experience, they watch a payment move and they know it's hit the recipient's account. Uh, we know that they uh, often will go back and use it again. And that for us is really important about building our business and customer acquisitions and having a great experience and that really high NPS score. So by working with the banks, uh, are you finding that uh, you're able to bring uh, a set of expertise to them that they don't really have internally to be able to help them provide better? I think that's one of those things where banks do a lot of things brilliantly, but not all banks are going to be experts on how cross-border payments should move. And so quite often they might look at WISE and think, well, there's some front-end elements there for the customer experience point of view, being able to be really transparent on the fees that a customer might pay, having really low-cost pricing. Being able to see that payment move instantly is a great win. And also just seeing that payment end-to-end -end really transparently. And the, these things, they know are important to customers, and they want to start kind of bringing this to the end customer experience they have in their own app. I would imagine that it would also be very important internally in the bank uh, to be able to see the, the payments go through very quickly, to be able to, to track them. You know, they have their reporting that they have to do, all, all of these kind of things. 
Is this an area that you help with also? 100%. So what we know is that instant payments and payments that move very quickly often have lower contact rates as well, right? So one of the reasons that people get in touch with their bank when they have an international payment is often because they think, where's my money? So they kind of worry about the idea of their money moving. So when you can offer that instantly, you kind of take that concern down. And so one of those things also helps save the bank a lot of cost from their customer support channels. So it's also something we talk about quite often. But, you know, you're right. I mean, I, uh, talking to banks, Probably the most common phone call banks get is, where's my money? And and here, if you're doing this in 20 seconds, there's not even time to pick up the phone. Yeah, that's the idea, is that a customer kind of knows and they have that, that kind of validation when they actually open the app, they can actually see a delivery estimate when that payment might arrive, and then they know the payout's been happening with the recipient. Um, so it kind of gives them that sort of relief that their money is safe and it's gone through. Okay. And uh, are you working with uh, the corporate side also in the same way, like SMEs? So we have uh, business customers and personal customers using Wise App today. And then, of course, we have partners that we power, the likes of things like Monzo and N26, who then have their own end customers, who might be personal customers or businesses moving money around the world. And obviously what we're seeing is international payment flows grow and grow because we have work in a more global world where people are paying suppliers or paying businesses or customers. Um, and so essentially we kind of see this kind of happening more and more. So if I understand that, then for you, it, it, it doesn't matter who the end customer actually is. You're providing a very quick service for them, whatever they do, wherever they're, they're doing it. And this is, uh, you know, it's, it's something that really I think is necessary today because in the past, international payments, cross-border payments were sometimes days, right? Yeah, and this is what we're trying to change. So we move quite a significant amount of money now, around 100 billion in a year. And so we are cross-border experts in the sense that we know that this volumes are growing. And so really it's about us taking some of the learnings from our own 16 million customers that we're servicing and taking that and saying, well, we can help partners as well deliver a great experience to their own customers. Um, and as you're rightly saying, there's lots of people that focus on international payments. It's a growing area. So for the banks that you work in, it, it, are you uh, more focused on the larger banks? Or it, it would seem to me that some of the smaller banks would really benefit more because they have less infrastructure and, and less expertise. We kind of have a range of different partners, which is what's really great. So we work with some really like forward thinking digital banks that people know of like New Bank and N26. And then we work with some more traditional players, Bank Mandiri, for example, in Indonesia. So we really do see a broad range and we're able to kind of work with, with both types of banks quite easily because we have teams that are kind of experts and able to get these partnerships off the ground. So one of the things that's interesting is a bank can instruct us to make a payment either by API or by Swift message. So actually we're able to kind of use the way they work today with a lot of their other correspondents but still offer this really speedy service on the other end. So th that was interesting too because yeah, the main form of payments in Swift of course and Red side was is uh, uh, you know, the world's uh, carrier of money really, right? And they have several initiatives that they're looking at but they've always in, and needed to be say careful so being able to work with somebody like yourself who has proven technology, the speed, the expertise, yeah. how does that benefit? Well, it, look, we, we announced our collaboration with Swift last Cybos actually, and it was a really important part for us to kind of have that announcement, that collaboration. I think it brought a lot of credibility, and I think a lot of the banks we talk to, they understand that world. And of course, Swift Messages is the way they've been thinking about payments for many years. So it was about kind of understanding how they work today and actually coming towards that point and saying, well, actually, we can provide our service still, and they can also work with a range of providers to be able to do that. You know, so when we talk about Swift, they are, of course, the sponsor of Cybos, which is, you know, a truly amazing event. One of my favorites during the year. Uh, why, why is, did you ch chose to make such a presence at Cybos? I think for us, this is kind of where the banking community meets, right? So it's where we have current and future partners. So we want to be in this space where we're talking to banks. And of course, it's that step towards this direction of we're a correspondent service. So not only are we a fintech that has our own direct customers, but we also work with many of these banks. And so for us, they are partners as well. Uh, and we kind of see this happening more and more, these kind of partnerships between banks and fintechs, where maybe a fintech has a particular niche or a specialism. It's kind of getting the best of everything, right? You can kind of go around and have great collaborations where you kind of bring in those great things for your customers' end. You know, and that's that's interesting too, because the challenge for a lot of banks that I, I see is, is that so much of their budget is on legacy infrastructure. So it makes it very difficult for them to really develop something new. So a partnership with WISE 
Yeah, we hear this challenge a lot. So obviously there's there's cost and there's there's time and resource into doing a very large scale API integration. So some banks are able to do that more readily and others they may think actually we can work together right now on a swift messaging structure where you instruct us in that way and we're able to act as their correspondent. So I think it's kind of a, a first step for many banks to be able to work with WISE and actually make those payments instant for their customers. Uh, and then some of them might think about an API integration, maybe longer term as well. Yeah, and, and that's also very interesting too for me because you know in the past we had to build interfaces and everything. So the API should be a very quick and efficient way. Yeah, exactly that. So they can instruct us by API. They can also maybe bring in some of the front end features of WISE. So this would be their own UI, their own UX, but maybe having some of those experiential things like a delivery estimate, maybe like a transparent pricing, being able to track that payment end to end. And these are the kind of nice functionality that a customer now expects. So you're basically able to provide the technology, give the bank the branding that they want, and for the customer, it's seamless. They just see new features. Yeah. And oh. works every well for everyone. Then, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, the customer wins because they're getting a great experience, whether that's speed and low cost and all the great things about being able to see a payment and track that. So, Roshi, then let's get to the my favorite part, which is uh, let's talk a little bit about the future. What is the future for WISE? Where, where do you see uh, your next steps going? So there's a few things. So one is that we have this kind of mission, which is towards making payments really low cost and frictionless and as instant as possible. So we're always kind of striving on that. So that could be kind of like optimizing the network wherever it's possible to, to lower the cost for customers. But it's also in bringing the majority of payments up towards instant. So right now, as I said, it's 62% are instant under 20 seconds. It's actually how can we keep moving that? So we have, we have you know, one day 70% or, or higher than that. So for us, if we know that's the best customer experience, it's kind of doing more of that. And then of course, on WISE platform side, it's about bringing this kind of infrastructure and some of the magic of WISE to more banks. So talking to more and more banks across the world, not just in Europe, in APAC, in North America, uh, and seeing how many we can collaborate with. You know, I like that term, the magic of WISE. And it seems to me one of the magics that, uh, that you offer is, uh, is a lower cost than what's typically out there. Yeah. How do you do that? So we've done this because we've been able to build an infrastructure from kind of ground up. So, you know, spending 10 years kind of building something means that operationally we have all the technology to make things efficient as possible. Uh, we're able to use local schemes wherever possible as well. Um, and so for us, this is about kind of the most important thing is this lowering the end price to a customer. But a really key part of this is just being transparent as well on price because we understand that customers can often find cross-border payments somewhat confusing. Uh, so we're always very fair and show a mid-market FX rate and a total fee to any customer. Uh, which a lot of times uh, they don't get to see from their bank. Yeah, and this is super important for us because it's it's one you kind of look at and you can see very clearly what am I going to pay for that payment, how much money is going to arrive for the recipient. Um, and if I think customers, they really enjoy that experience when they know exactly the cost up front. So the, the future sounds really exciting for WISE and the WISE platform. For me, can you tell me a little bit about what you really see going on in the future? As an expert in this field, where is it going as an industry? Well, I think you kind of touched on it, like if you go around the stores today and you're kind of looking around the conference, you've got big banks, very much kind of legacy players, but you've also got a number of fintechs and you've got kind of B2B fintechs and technology companies springing up. And I think it comes down to this collaboration between the two, which we're going to see more and more of, right? So we're going to see kind of experts in a particular domain and then banks kind of looking and working with them. And it's ultimately about bringing the best experience to that end customer, whether that's kind of low cost payments, instant payments, wherever possible, um, and those kind of front end features we just mentioned. Well, great. I really appreciate you spending some time with us. Machine, it was a, a, quite a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My name is Chris Principe, and this is Financial IT.